بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله uh, Our last lecture for the virology course is going to be about the antiviral drugs So uh, for the antiviral drugs uh, we uh, are going to do like a, a quick review of some of the concepts that we have already covered in the previous lectures So viruses have no cell wall and they are made up of a nucleo Capsid. The simplest form of the virus is nucleocapsid, where the genetic material is encoded by a, a protein, which we call the capsid, so it is nucleocapsid. Viruses containing the envelope, <coughs> uh, and within the envelope we have an embedded glycoproteins or spikes, and the glycoproteins or the spikes for the envelope viruses are the outermost part of the virus and they are antigenic in nature uh, viruses uh, cannot replicate on uh, surfaces and they uh, are obligate intracellular parasites they should exist inside a cell in order to replicate uh, their genome and produce new virions they do not have a metabolic machinery of their own they use the they use the host enzymes and here we need to differentiate between RNA and DNA viruses because RNA and DNA viruses uh, uh, dependency on the uh, host cell varies so uh, some viruses bring their own enzymes and others use the host enzymes just go back and review it if you do not know which ones are which Certain viruses multiply in the cytoplasm, but others do in the nucleus, and we gave the general rule that all DNA viruses replicate in the nucleus except for, and all RNA viruses replicate in the cytoplasm except for, and by that time, or by this time, you should know what are the exceptions of this rule. Most multiplication takes place before diagnosis is made, and here we're talking especially about the acute infections. In acute infections, the uh, multiplication of the virus starts even before the appearance of the uh, symptoms. So for the antiviral drugs, we have uh, antiviral drugs which are purine or primidine analogs. And we mean by purine analogs being mimicking the A and uh, G uh, bases or primidine analogs mimicking the C and T analogs and taking place of the uh, these bases in the uh, growing chain or in the uh, newly produced uh, genome and once they are inserted in the newly produced genome of the virus they are going to prevent further uh, elongation of the viral genome and they are going to uh, stop the uh, genome replication. Many antiviral drugs are prodrugs. What do we mean by prodrugs? Prodrugs that these drugs in their in this form they are not active drugs and they require phosphorylation by the cellular enzymes in order to become an act in the active form or to be uh, transformed into the active form of the drug. They must be phosphorylated by viral or cellular enzymes in order to become active. So the phosphorylation is by viral or cellular enzyme. Which do you think is better, phosphorylation by the viral or the cellular enzymes? Of course viral enzymes is better because only cells which are infected by the virus, in these cells, the virus is going to transform the prodrug into an active form of the drug. So this is going to minimize the side effects of the drug in the non-infected cells. But if the prodrug is transformed into the active form of the drug using the cellular enzymes, then all the cells, whether infected or non-infected, are going to transform the drug into the active form of the drug, and this is going to increase the side effects of the drug on the whole body. The antiviral agents inhibit active replication only. So they, the antiviral drugs uh, works on only replicating viruses. And it's going to inhibit its uh, replication. If we're talking about like latent viruses, then the antiviral drugs are not going to work on latent viruses. 
Current antiviral agents do not eliminate non-replicating or latent viruses. Uh, effective host immune response remains essential for the recovery from the viral infection. Antiviral drugs on their own are one of the mechanisms by which we can control the viral infection. But the host immune response and an effective host immune response remains vital and really important to contain the viral infection. And the host immune response, spe specifically the adaptive immune response, we're talking about the humoral arm and the cellular arm of the uh, adaptive immune response, is really important to contain the virus. And the antiviral drugs come to help and aid in this role. The clinical efficacy depends on achieving inhibitory concentration at the site of infection within the infected cell. And that's in a way similar to what we see with antibacterial drugs. So the antibacterial drug need to be in an effective and high concentration to inhibit bacterial replication. It's the same here for viruses. The, vir the antiviral drug concentration uh, in the uh, target cells or within the infected cells should be inhibitory concentration in order to inhibit the viruses. Otherwise, the viruses might develop, a tap, if it's a suboptimal concentration, the viruses might uh, develop uh, adaptive uh, mutations, and that's one of the mechanisms by which viruses might uh, develop resistance against an antiviral drug. Uh, stages of viral replication. Uh, so we are going to uh, remind you of the stages of viral replication uh, since we have antiviral drugs which are going to act on the different stages of the viral mechanism. So viruses start by uh, attachment to receptors on target cell and after that they enter the cell uh, by a penetration step where penetration can occur via either receptor mediated endocytosis or uh, via uh, fusion. Also, we have the uncoating step followed by the uh, synthetic step where there is transcription of the viral genome or genome replication and translation or synthesis and production of a new virus protein. Uh, after the genome and the protein are uh, uh, being made and ready, then assembly of the, these components occur to produce new virions and after that there is the release and maturation steps and the maturation might occur before release or after release it's just a matter of time so that the uh, viral proteins take their uh, final shape and become a uh, functional so this diagram shows so uh, this diagram shows the uh, different steps of the viral replication here we have the viral adsorption and we can see that we have two uh, drugs infovertide or fusone uh, which acts against hiv virus and we have the maraviric which is ccr5 receptor antagonist and i think you can remember that ccr5 is one of the co-receptors for the hiv entry so the, both of those drugs uh, act on the uh, hiv uh, virus uh, after that, we have the uncoating step, and the uncoating step, we have two drugs, amantidine and remantidine, uh, which inhibit the uncoating step in influenza A only. We have influenza A, influenza B, influenza C. Usually, we talk about influenza A and influenza B. Influenza C uh, is not that problematic, and uh, it is associated, if it causes infection, very mild infection, unnoticed infection. So, we usually talk about influenza A and influenza B. Most commonly, influenza A is the uh, is circulating around. So the uh, amantidine, remantidine uh, work on the uh, uncoating step of influenza A. Also, we have early protein synthesis, which is blocked by an, uh, a drug called fomiversin, which affects cytomegalovirus, a member of the herpes viridae family. Also, we have most of the uh, antiviral drugs uh, inhibit the nucleic acid synthesis, and we have uh, purine, trimidine analogs, reverse transcriptase inhibitors. Uh, also, we have late protein synthesis and processing, uh, such as uh, protease inhibitors, 
and uh, methasazone in uh, the uh, variola. Also, we have packaging and assembly. We have the drug uh, rifampicin uh, or rifampicin. And uh, also we have uh, the drug which can act on the viral release step. Uh, we're talking here about neuraminidase inhibitors, which act on both influenza A and influenza B at the same uh, time. So to start with, we're going to start with uh, anti-herpes virus agents. We're going to cover anti-herpes, uh, anti-hepatitis, uh, and uh, anti-HIV. Uh, uh, when we talk about the antiviral drugs, also for also drugs for the respiratory viral uh, infections. So the anti-herpes virus agents, we have the acyclovir, valcyclovir, fomcyclovir, pencyclovir, gancyclovir, sudafovir, foscarne, trifluoridine, uh, idoxyuridine, and vidarabine. Uh, what is the difference between the acyclovir and the valcyclovir, the famcyclovir, and the pencyclovir? So after phosphorylation, acyclovir and famcyclovir require phosphorylation and after being phosphorylated by the uh, viral enzymes, they are going to be transformed to valcyclovir or pencyclovir. So, what's the difference then between acyclovir and valcyclovir? Valcyclovir has uh, better bioavailability. Pencyclovir, the same. So, what does that mean when they have better bioavailability? If we, if, the, if we need like 20 microgram to be a, at inhibitory concentration for certain uh, herpes infection, infection, then uh, we need less uh, initial dosage of the valacyclovir. Let's say 10, 5, because it has better bioavailability. So all these drugs uh, act on the herpes virally. So uh, valacyclovir is, pro, uh, is a prodrug of acyclovir with better bioavailability. So it's a prodrug of acyclovir. Valacyclovir is phosphorylated, not the other way around, as I said in the first, uh, in the previous uh, slide. So valacyclovir is a prodrug which needs to be phosphorylated. Then it becomes acyclovir-like but with better bioavailability. As we said, the initial uh, dose is going to be less in valacyclovir compared to acyclovir. Famcyclovir is hydrolyzed to pencyclovir and has greatest bioavailability as well. Pencyclovir is used only topically, whereas famcyclovir can be administered orally. Acyclovir, valcyclovir, gancyclovir, famcyclovir, pencyclovir are all guanine nucleoside analog. So they resemble guanine. So as we said, when it resembles guanine, then it's going to be inserted in, uh, inserted in the growing uh, genome of the virus. And once inserted, instead of the G, then it's going to prevent any further elongation of the growing genome or nucleic material of the virus and it's going to stop virus replication and genome production. Mechanism of action of acyclovir and uh, the other compounds. All drugs are phosphorylated by a viral thymidine kinase. So they are phosphorylated by a viral enzyme which is thymidine kinase. Once again, is that a good thing? Yes, it is a good thing because only viral infected cells, the prodrug is going to be converted to the active form of the drug and it's going to act only on the cells which are infected by the virus and spare the non-infected cells and this is going to be associated with less side effects. Then metabolized by the host cell kinases to nucleotide analogs. The analog inhibit the viral DNA polymerase. Incorporation of acyclovir triphosphate into the growing viral DNA chain and only actively replicating viruses are inhibited.
this is to uh, clarify what we were talking about. So this is acyclovir, and this is the uh, the drug which is activated by the viral kinase to to give acycloguanosine monophosphate, which is further activated by the host cell kinases to give acycloguanosine triphosphate. This acycloguanosine triphosphate is going to be inserted instead in, in instead of the G in the uh, viral uh, new uh, replicating viral genome. And once inserted here, it's going to pref to prevent any further addition of bases here and it's going to stop the replication of the genome of the virus and i usually uh, resemble that with like uh, uh, a person who has two hands so if if we're talking about these spaces then this space is going to have one hand here and one hand here but this drug is going to have one hand here in order to be inserted here, but there is no hand to uh, support any addition of other nucleotides on this side. And it's going to, the growing chain of the DNA of the virus is going to stop here. The antiviral drugs acyclovir is thus selectively activated in cells infected with herpes virus. Uninfected cells do not phosphorylate acyclovir. So it's going to target only the cells which are infected by the virus and spare the non-infected cells. So the acyclovir is used for the herpes simplex virus 1, herpes simplex virus 2, varicella zoster virus, and shingles. Herpes simplex virus 1 uh, usually infects above the waist and usually it is uh, circumoral. Herpes simplex virus 2 has to do with uh, genital infections genitalia it's a uh, uh, sexually transmitted disease we have varicella zoster virus which causes chicken box in children and then the virus goes and lie dormant it's a latent virus it goes lie dormant in the dorsal nerve ganglia to be activated uh, once again uh, after years or even decades and the trigger for activation of these dormant or latent viruses are uh, old age uh, suppression of immunity exposure to sunlight exposure to uv light uh, infections all these uh, are uh, factors which help in the reactivation of the uh, varicella zoster virus and then uh, it becomes as shingles Usually, we, sh we see shingles uh, in uh, persons aged uh, 50s or even 60s are more common. So that's when the immune system uh, is not as uh, effective as uh, before. And this might lead to a reactivation of the uh, latent viruses. We have the gancyclovir and sodofovir, which are active against cytomegalovirus. We have the uh, famcyclovir, uh, which can uh, be, uh, be used uh, as a substitute for uh, acyclovir in a case of uh, herpes simplex virus 2 and in shingles. Also, we have the foscarnet for herpes simplex virus, varicella zoster, cytomegalovirus, and it is also effective in HIV as well. The uh, pencyclovir is also effective against herpes labialis, which is caused by herpes simplex virus 1. And trifluorodine uh, is uh, used to treat herpetic keratoconjunctivitis, which is uh, an infection of the uh, cornea and the conjunctiva of the uh, eye, which is caused by herpes simplex virus. Uh, acyclovir, the oral bioavailability for, for acyclovir is 20 to 30 percent. What do we mean by oral bioavailability? I think you, uh, you should have taken that in the pharmacology. When the oral bioavailability is higher, then uh, this drug is uh, given uh, via the oral route. Once the oral bioavailability drops down, uh, to single figures, maybe it's better to 
uh, look for uh, other routes of administration. Uh, the uh, acyclovir can be distributed in all body tissues, including the CNS. Uh, it is excreted by the uh, kidney and uh, it has a half-life of two and a half hours and it is given topically, orally or IV. Uh, renal excretion, half-lives, uh, I don't ask you to uh, remember all these things because uh, you should uh, know them in pharmacology and you might be asked about them but here in microbiology I do not want you to focus on those things but let's go back to administration so if we have topical we have oral and we have IV in which cases can we give the topical and which case can we give the oral and which case can we give the IV so here we're talking about the herbis semplex virus infection topical as we said there is the cold sore or the fever blister which is circum oral where it starts with a lesion which becomes filled with fluid and then it postulates uh, become uh, yellow or whitish yellowish color in color due to uh, the presence of pus there so in this case we can use the topical uh, ointment to treat it at the same time we can also use the oral also in the case of shingles where we have reactivation of the uh, virus uh, then uh, the uh, we can use the topical on the uh, legion which mimics the herbis semplex uh, virus uh, legions which are uh, pus but they are very they are uh, very uh, painful and at the same time we can give the oral medication in order to uh, support or uh, drop significantly the virus replication and at the same time in the case of the shingles we need to give strong uh, painkiller uh, because the uh, pain in, ca in case of shingle is very uh, severe the IV when can we use the acyclovir IV so uh, as we said previously if the a pregnant woman is uh, screened and she has herpes simplex virus it is contraindicated to deliver vaginally she, she should be delivered via cesarean section because if the if the baby was delivered vaginally then uh, he has a high chance of becoming infected with herpes simplex virus and as a result this is going to lead to infection of the cns brain of the baby and it's going to lead to liquefaction of the brain of the baby and death is uh, Death is expected in 90 to 100% of the cases. Uh, also, in certain uh, cases, the uh, herpes might cause uh, meningitis, encephalitis. If we suspect any patient to have uh, herpetic uh, encephalitis or meningitis, then the drug should be given uh, IV. Adverse effects of acyclovir and gancyclovir. Uh, we can see nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. It is also associated with nephrotoxicity. It can lead to myelosuppression, uh, neutropenia, and thrombocytopenia, especially the uh, GAN cyclovir. What are the therapeutic uses of acyclovir? Uh, herpes simplex virus genital infection caused by herpes simplex virus 2, herpes simplex virus encephalitis, herpes simplex virus infection in immunocompromised. Uh, patients. Gancyclovir is the drug of choice for cytomegalovirus retinitis in immunocompromised uh, patients and prevention of cytomegalovirus disease in the transplant patients. Usually cytomegalovirus does not uh, infect immunocompetent persons. It, uh, it rather infects immunocompromised patients uh, with uh, AIDS or who, uh, those who are on uh, uh, immunosuppressive uh, medications. Uh, and uh, in, the, in this case, the gancyclovir is the drug of choice. Uh, as we said in acyclovir, it is activated by uh, the viral enzyme thymidine kinase. In cytomegalovirus, there is another viral enzyme which is responsible for activating the gancyclovir or transforming the gancyclovir into the active form of the drug. Please, this is your homework to do. What is the name of the enzyme which activates scan cyclovir.
Cedofovir, it's approved for the treatment of cytomegalovirus as well, retinitis in immunocompromised patients, and uh, it is also used in uh, certain in instances for adenovirus infection as well. It's not specific for adenovirus, but uh, it was uh, shown to uh, be effective in uh, certain uh, circumstances with adenovirus infection. It's a nucleotide analog of cytosine. So acyclovir uh, and the others were uh, guanine analogs. Here we have the cytofovir is uh, a cytosine analog, so it resembles the C, uh, but this one does not require phosphorylation. So it is in the active form of the drug once given. It inhibits viral DNA synthesis available for IV, intravitreal injection in the eye, or topical uh, ointment. It is associated with nephrotoxicity. When we say that this is a nucleotide analog of cytosine and no phosphorylation is required, then the first thing that should come to mind is that this might be associated with more side effects compared to the acyclovir and other related drugs because it's going to act on infected and non-infected cells at the same time. Also we have bidarabine which is a nucleoside analog of uh, adenosine so it resembles the A. Uh, it can be used for herpes simplex virus 1, herpes simplex virus 2 and varicella zoster virus and its use is limited to uh, keratitis so inflammation of the cornea in the eye. The drug is converted into its triphosphate analog, which inhibits viral DNA polymerase. Oral bioavailability is low, so it's not given orally. It is given as an ophthalmic ointment. It's used in herpes simplex virus keratoconjunctivitis in immunocompromised uh, patients, and uh, it might be associated with uh, anemia and other adverse effects. The last drug we're going to talk about uh, for the treatment of herpes viridae is the trifluoridine. It is a primidine nucleoside analog. It inhibits viral DNA synthesis and uh, it can be used for herpes simplex virus 1, herpes simplex virus 2, and varicella zoster. And its use is limited to uh, topical use and given uh, in the case of ocular keratitis. Foscarnet is an inorganic pyrophosphate analog. It directly inhibits viral DNA and RNA polymerase and viral reverse transcriptase. It does not require phosphorylation for antiviral drug. So, like cytofovir, this does not require phosphorylation. It's in the active form of the drug. And uh, it and uh, it uh, inhibits DNA and RNA polymerase and reverse transcriptase as well. Since it inhibits reverse transcriptase, then it can be used for HIV. It is used also for herpes simplex virus 1, herpes simplex virus 2, varicella zoster and cytomegalovirus. Oral bioavailability is uh, 10 to 20 and distribution to all tissues, including CNS, it can reach the CNS. Uh, and it is given usually in the form of an IV. Uh, therapeutic uses of foscarnet is an alternative drug for herpes simplex virus infection in case of acyclovir resistance or in immunocompromised patients. And for cytomegalovirus retinitis also it is, uh, uh, it can be used in the case of gancyclovir resistance in immunocompromised patients. So the foscarnet was the last drug that we uh, talked about for uh, treatment of herpes virus in, uh, infections. Next, we're going to talk about respiratory viral infections. We have the influenza, we have uh, influenza virus, and we have the respiratory syncytial virus, which causes bron bronchitis or bronchiolitis and bronchopneumonia in uh, infants. 
Influenza, we have two drugs. First is amantidine and rimantidine, and then we have the oseltamivir and zanamivir. Amantidine and rimantidine, as we mentioned on the uh, figure shown at the beginning, uh, acts on the uncoating step, and it is only effective for influenza A virus. Oseltamivir and zanamivir are neuraminidase inhibitors, and uh, once given, they prevent the release of the influenza virus from the infected cell, and then they drop the uh, amount of uh, viruses, uh, the infectious viruses which are produced from that uh, cell. So they belong to the neuraminidase inhibitors, amantidine and rimantidine. Resistance to amantidine and rimantidine is very high. It might reach 90 to 95%. Oseltamivir and zanamivir are better given. And the, uh, the oseltamivir and zanamivir are more widely used uh, nowadays for influenza virus uh, infection. Also, we have the respiratory syncytial virus. As we said, causes bronchiolitis and bronchopneumonia in uh, infants and uh, small children. We're talking mostly about uh, one year to two years of age. And it can, uh, in this case, we can use the ribavirin to treat those uh, children. Amantidine and rimantidine, prevention and treatment of influenza virus. Prevention and treatment. Treatment of influenza virus. So if someone has been diagnosed with influenza virus and diagnosis is usually clinical with influenza infection, patients usually present with uh, fever, uh, rhinorrhea, uh, coughing, sneezing, uh, general fatigue, uh, arthralgia and myalgia. So if we diagnose the, the patient has been infected with influenza virus, we might use the amantidine or the mantidine. Uh, and it can be used in prevention. We're going to come to that later on. How can we use it for prevention of influenza virus infection? Inhibition of viral uncoating by inhibiting the viral membrane protein M2. So it acts by inhibition of the viral uncoating step by inhibiting the viral membrane protein M2. The viral membrane protein M2 is only present in an influenza A viruses. It's not present in influenza B virus. So that's why we say that amantidine and rimantidine can be used only for influenza A because it acts on a protein which is only present in influenza A virus. It's not in, present in influenza B viruses. So even if given for influenza B, there is no M2 protein and it's not going to be active against influenza B viruses. So once again, it blocks the M2 protein, uh, disrupts hydrogen transport, viral uncoating in host cell, and therefore viral RNA transcription. So it is used only for influenza A. It has a very high oral bioavailability. Uh, cross the blood-brain barrier. The amantidine, whereas the rimantidine does not cross the blood-brain barrier, can be given orally. But as we said, the resistance is very high with amantidine and rimantidine and might reach up to 90-95%. Neuraminidase inhibitors, which can be used for influenza A and B, uh, they are oseltamivir and uh, zanamivir. Uh, influenza contain an enzyme, neuraminidase, which is essential for the replication of the virus. And uh, the neuraminidase enzyme, we have, if you remember, when we talked about the influenza virus, we have two glycoproteins, the HA and the NA. The NA is the neuraminidase. So the HA is used for mainly for attachment to receptor and uh, entry of the influenza virus into the target cell. The NA has multiple functions. One of them is to uh, attachment with the virus before release and uh, uh, after that it cleaves the uh, bond between the uh, virus and the NA and set the virus free. If we use the neuraminidase inhibitor then it's going to prevent the, this 
uh, cleavage of the binding between the virus and the NA, and it's going to prevent the uh, release of the new virion, and uh, it's going to minimize the uh, number of infected cells uh, nearby. These are effective against both types of influenza A and B. They do not interfere with uh, immune response to influenza A vaccine and can be used for both prophylaxis and acute treatment. So let's get uh, to the uh, prophylaxis and acute uh, treatment. In the case of acute treatment, as we said, the patient might be symptomatic with uh, influenza virus infection, and we mentioned what are the symptoms that patient might come with. So in this case, we can use either the uh, amantidirimantidine or siltamavir and zanamavir. But in case of prophylaxis, what do we mean by giving it prophylactically? Prophylaxis, when we say we want to give a drug as a prophylaxis, then we want to give the drug before the patients get infected by the virus as a precautionary measure. What are the cases in which we can give these drugs, antiviral drugs or the influenza uh, drugs uh, prophylactically? In the case of a pandemic, if we have a pandemic and uh, the, uh, the virus is spreading quickly, then we can give the virus the under the uh, oseltamavir and zanamavir uh, uh, prophylactically. Also, in case there is in the household, we have like five or six living in the same house, and three or four of them got infected with influenza virus, so most probably the other two are going to become infected, so we can give them prophylactically uh, the oseltamavir and zanamavir. Uh, also, in the case of uh, immunocompromised patients who are immunocompromised and uh, uh, they get into contact with patients who uh, are infected with the uh, influenza virus, then we can give them uh, prophylactically. Oseltamavir is orally administered, zanamavir is given intra. Uh, nasal and the risk of bronchospasm. There is a risk of uh, there is a risk of uh, bronchospasm with zanamavir. So this is one of the side effects of the uh, zanamavir. Uh, ribavirin is a guanosine analog. So it's a guanosine analog. Requires phosphorylation to monodiene triphosphate. Triphosphate inhibits RNA polymerase and depletes cellular stores of guanine then a decreased synthesis of messenger RNA, which would interfere with the guanylation and methylation of a nucleic acid uh, basis. So this is the mechanism of action of the ribavirin. Uh, the uh, antiviral drug uh, ribavirin can be given for uh, RNA viruses, including influenza, para-influenza, respiratory syncytial virus is the drug of choice in the case of respiratory syncytial virus, it can be given for Lassa virus infection, can be given for hepatitis C virus infection as well, uh, in addition to uh, tegelated interferon in the case of hepatitis C. Uh, it proved to be uh, somehow effective. Uh, it's distributed in, the all, in all the body except for the central nervous system, can be given orally, IV or inhalation. Uh, anemia and jaundice are adverse effects of the ribavirin and it's not advised to be given during uh, pregnancy. Uh, therapeutic uses of ribavirin uh, is the drug of choice for respiratory syncytial virus, bronchiolitis and bronchopneumonia in hospitalized children, usually given as an aerosol or uh, sometimes they are given in uh, uh, what they call the oxygen tent or the tent, so the, the, the drug is uh, aerosolized within uh, the tent and uh, the, then the uh, children are going to uh, breathe it and take it in, take it in into the uh, lungs. It's also used for uh, Lassa fever. Uh, it is an alternative drug for influenza, parainfluenza, measles, uh, infection in immunocompromised patients. And as we said, uh, uh, in addition to pegylated interferon, can be used for hepatitis C virus infections as well. 
The third uh, antiviral drug that we're going to talk about, the third group is uh, for hepati uh, hepatitis uh, viral infection. And when we say hepatitis viral infection, we have hepatitis A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Do you know that we have that much of the hepatitis viral infections? Yes. But most viral infections are acute infections, apart from hepatitis B and hepatitis C, which are chronic uh, hepatitis viral uh, infections. And in this case, we can use interferons, uh, which suppress the uh, immunity. Uh, we can use lamivudine, which is a cytosine analog, can be used for hepatitis B. We can use intikavir, uh, uh, which is a guanosine analog for hepatitis B and, uh, uh, and uh, for the hepatitis B where the uh, strains are lamivudine resistance. So we can use either lamivudine. In case of resistance to lamiv lamivudine, we can use intikavir. Uh, for hepatitis C, we can use the repavirin with pegylated interferons. Uh, uh, and there is uh, a newly uh, approved drug by the uh, FDA, uh, I think uh, in 2013 or 2014, which is the Sophos uh, Povir which is a nucleotide analog used in combination with other drugs, either ribavirin and, inter and interferon. Initially, once the sofosbuvir uh, was uh, approved, it was used with ribavirin and pegylated interferon uh, for the treatment of hepatitis C virus infection. Nowadays, sofosbuvir is, used, is not used with interferon uh, anymore or ribavirin. There are uh, other uh, combinations that has proved to be uh, more uh, efficient and uh, once the sofosbuvir was uh, approved uh, the course consisted of a 12 week treatment and uh, during the 12 weeks uh, the uh, patient takes uh, one day one uh, pill uh, per day so uh, we're talking about uh, 84 uh, bells for the whole treatment period and the uh, single uh, bell was uh, priced at 1,000 uh, US dollars. So uh, it is one of the uh, expensive drugs, but it is associated with complete cure and recovery from hepatitis C virus infection. Uh, that's uh, history of the hepatitis C virus treatment. So in 1986, uh, the hepatitis C was identified and it was called uh, previously uh, that year, non-A, non-B, and then they called it hepatitis C. Uh, in the 1990s, interferon was uh, introduced as a drug of choice to treat uh, hepatitis C. Interferon is immunosuppressive and associated with multiple side effects. Uh, also, during the uh, early 1990s, ribavirin was added to uh, interferon and it was uh, effective at around 50%. Uh, after that, in 2001, the interferon was replaced with the pegylated interferon, which is a slow release and have a, ha uh, have a uh, more half-life and uh, that uh, would lead to uh, giving, giving the uh, pegylated interfer interferon as a single uh, shot uh, for one week or 10 days instead of giving it uh, daily in the case of the uh, classic interferon with the ribavirin. In 2011, a uh, protease inhibitor which, in which inhibits the NS3-4A uh, protein of the uh, hepatitis C virus uh, was uh, approved, uh, Pocaprevir, and after that, multiple drugs such as Telaprevir, Simprevir, Asunaprevir, and Partiprevir, and Grazoprevir were approved. In 2013, the first NS5B polymerase inhibitor, Sophosprevir, was approved by the FDA, and the uh, next year, 2014, Dasapuvir was approved as another NS5B uh, inhibitor uh, of hepatitis C. Uh, in 2014, the first NS5A inhibitor, uh, Lidipasvir, was approved, 
and after that four other NS5A inhibitors were used were uh, approved uh, dac 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 severe Ombitasevir, Ilbasevir, and Vilbatasevir have been uh, approved. Uh, don't worry about the names, uh, even it's uh, difficult to uh, say them or spell them. Uh, but nowadays, they found that NS5A and NS5B combination has shown uh, greater uh, results with cure rate uh, ranging from uh, 30 to 100 percent depending on the genotype of the uh, hepatitis C so we have genotypes 1 to 6 and uh, depending on the uh, genotypes the uh, cure rate was seen uh, from 30 percent to uh, 100 percent in uh, depending on the genotype of the hepatitis C now we're going to talk about the last group of the antiviral drugs which uh, are used to treat the uh, retroviridae and one of the members of the retroviridae is the HIV uh, the HIV in this uh, picture we can see this is the uh, HIV virus here we can see we have the glycoprotein or the spike which is composed of G120 120 which is the outer part of the glycoprotein and we have the transmembrane or the uh, the uh, envelope embedded part of it is the gb41 here uh, then we have the icosahedral capsid we have two copies of the positive sense single stranded rna HIV is unique that it has it's a diploid has two copies of the positive sense single stranded RNA also it has an enzyme reverse transcriptase uh, it has the matrix protein and it has the integrase enzyme it has the protease enzyme by now you should know the replication cycle of the H IV if not please go back and uh, remind yourself of the replication cycle of the HIV it's really important and I think uh, question might be in the exam uh, regarding the replication cycle of HIV so why are we talking about the structure of HIV here because for the HIV there are multiple drugs that uh, affect uh, or that block different steps of the viral replication and affect uh, different enzymes. So there are inhibitors of the integrase enzyme, there are inhibitors of protease enzyme, there are inhibitors of the uh, fusion and uh, penetration of the virus into the target cell, and there are inhibitors of the reverse transcriptase enzyme as well. Usually when we talk about antiretroviral drugs, we uh, talk about the heart, which is the highly active antiretroviral therapy. And the heart uh, usually includes a combination of uh, three medications. As we said in the uh, HIV, we have drugs that target multiple steps of the viral replication. So in uh, this uh, cocktail that we use in the heart, usually we use uh, drugs that act on the uh, entry uh, step which are entry inhibitors protease uh, inhibitors integrase inhibitors uh, and uh, reverse transcriptase inhibitors so combination of these three drugs combination of these drugs are used to uh, reduce the amount of newly produced viruses and to decrease the viral uh, load. So let's start first with the uh, fusion inhibitors. So uh, it inhibits the viral uh, fusion, preventing the viral replication. It's a new class of the antiretroviral drugs. It is infovertite or fusone. Uh, it's used in combination with other drugs active against uh, HIV. Uh, the monitoring for uh, side effects, uh, there should be close monitoring for the side effects because it, it might be associated with neuropathy, insomnia, depression, cough, 
dyspnea, anorexia, or erythragia. Also, we have another entry inhibitor, which is the uh, CCR5 receptor antagonist. Its name is Maraveric. It was approved uh, by the FDA in 2007 and inhibits viral entry into the macrophages uh, at the T cells. It's used in combination with other drugs active against HIV. Uh, since it acts on the CCR5 receptor antagonist, which is a receptor present on our cells and it's not specific to the virus so blocking the receptors on our cells the, C the CCR5 receptor uh, function in our body is not uh, is not really uh, well uh, known and studied so uh, blocking the receptor could be associated with multiple side effects uh, studies are still underway uh, to uh, uh, see the efficacy and the safety of the uh, drug uh, and the new member of the uh, entry inhibitors is the uh, ibalizumab, uh, which is a monoclonal antibody that binds to uh, domain 2 of the CD4 and interferes with the post-attachment steps required for the entry of the HIV-1 virus and prevents cell-to-cell -cell fusion. So here we're talking about the infovertide, we're talking about the maraveric, which is a, a co-receptor antagonist, and we're talking about monoclonal antibody uh, ibalizumab. Iba, Iba The second class is the reverse transcriptase inhibitors, and most of the antiviral drugs uh, are within this class, reverse transcriptase inhibitor, uh, which is responsible for the replication of the genome of the HIV uh, virus. It's block, it blocks activity of the enzyme reverse transcriptase, preventing, preventing production of a new viral uh, DNA. Uh, the reverse transcriptase inhibitors are classified into uh, nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors, non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors, and nucleotide reverse transcriptase inhibitors. Uh, also, a new uh, investigational class, which is a nucleoside reverse transcriptase translocation inhibitor, uh, where we have the drug uh, is, is Islatravir which is an investigational drug, still under investigation, has not been approved yet. Uh, we have the nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors, uh, which once uh, phosphorylated, they become the nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors. So nucleoside, once phosphorylated, they become nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors. Here we have the az azidothymidine, didanosine, stavudine, and lamivudine. Here we have the nivirapine, del, uh, deliveridine, and ifavirenz, and here we have the tenofovir and adenofovir. Do not worry too much about the names. Uh, there are uh, more members of each uh, one group of the reverse transcriptase inhibitors. Uh, if I bring any question in the exam, I'm uh, going to tell you if I bring a single name like that, let's say uh, delaverdine, I'm going uh, to mention that this is a reverse transcriptase inhibitor. So do not worry too much about uh, memorizing these uh, names. Nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitor, they require phosphorylation by host cellular enzymes uh, to their active triphosphate. So they are activated by the host cell. Uh, since they're activated by the host cell, then, the, then, then this is going to lead to more side uh, effects. Uh, selective therapeutic effect, HIV RT is more sensitive to uh, AZT than host cell DNA polymerase. As we said, since it is uh, activated by the host uh, cell enzymes or kinases, then it's going to inhibit both the cellular replication and the viral replication. But here we need to mention something very important. If during the investigational phase they found that a certain drug has the ability to inhibit the host cellular replication or the cellular host cellular replication, is inhibited uh, at the same level and same degree as the viral uh, replication, then this drug is not going to hit the shelves for sure because it's not going to be approved because it's going to be associated with uh, great side effects. But they found that here for the azidothymidine, uh, for the azidothymidine uh, 
uh, it is more sensitive to the reverse transcriptase of the HIV. So if it, if it inhibits the cellular DNA, let's say by 1-2%, then it is going to inhibit the reverse transcriptase by 30-40%. So it has more affinity to the uh, reverse transcriptase of the uh, uh, the uh, virus than to the DNA polymerase of the cell. It's used against HIV-1, does not require cellular enzyme to be uh, phospho-related. This is the non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase. It's used against HIV-1, does not require phosphorylation, does not inhibit a human DNA polymerase, relatively safe, High, uh, highly prone to uh, drug resistance, so it's, it needs to be used always in combination with other drugs. Uh, the other class, or the next class, is integrase enzyme inhibitor. It's a class of antiretroviral drug assigned to block the action of integrase. And uh, if you can remember, integrase enzyme is the enzyme that makes sticky end in the viral genome and then incorporate the viral genome into the host genome. Uh, we have multiple drugs. Uh, the uh, first of them was the raltegravir, which was at the approved in 2007. After that, the elvitigravir in 2012, doltegravir in 2013, and the NULI, uh, the new member of the integrase enzyme inhibitor, which was approved in 2018, is the pectigravir. Uh, we have also the MK2048, which is an investigational drug, and it was found that the duration of action uh, is four times longer than uh, raltegravir. It has not been approved yet by the FDA, still uh, under investigation. Also, there is another group of uh, antiretroviral uh, drugs, which, we, which uh, they called them port portmanteau inhibitors, which both inhibit the reverse transcriptase and integrase enzyme at the same time. So they inhibit both the reverse transcriptase and integrase enzyme at the same time. We have the protease inhibitor, protease enzyme. As you remember, when we talked about translation of the uh, uh, HIV uh, genome, uh, into protein. It usually is translated into a long chain of polyprotein attached to each other and then protease enzyme comes and cleaves this long chain into individual proteins uh, to become uh, functional. If we prevent this cleavage uh, process then via the protease inhibitors then we we're going to prevent any assembly and production of new uh, virions. Inhibits protease retroviral enzyme preventing viral replication. Inhibition of this enzyme blocks viral assembly and uh, release. There are multiple examples such as amp uh, amprenavir, nelfinavir, saquinavir. Uh, uh, patient also should be uh, monitored closely for hepatotoxicity. And uh, as with other drugs, it's usually given in combination with uh, other classes of the antiretroviral. Uh, the uh, use of a single uh, drug in the case of HIV is uh, contraindicated because it's going to lead to uh, resistance uh, very shortly. Uh, so uh, medications should be given in combination and uh, the heart is, uh, needs to be given in a cocktail of uh, three medications which act on different steps of the viral replication. Uh, the adverse effects vary with each drug and uh, may be severe, so the patient uh, needs to be uh, monitored uh, for those limiting toxicity. And uh, if we notice any toxicities, there should be adjustment of the dose, lowering the dose or even switching to another uh, drug. Also, we need to monitor for signs of opportunistic uh, diseases uh, in case uh, when the patient is uh, on the uh, antiviral drugs, we need to monitor the uh, CD4 count. So if the CD4 count goes higher, uh, goes up, then there is a good response to the antiviral drugs. Uh, if the CD4 count goes uh, down, 
uh, below 200, we said that this patient is labeled as an AIDS patient and he's going to be prone to opportunistic disease. So during the time of treatment, we should uh, monitor for signs of opportunistic uh, diseases. Uh, so that's all for the uh, antiretroviral uh, drugs. Uh, the final thing that we're going to talk about is the uh, interferons. Interferons are natural proteins produced by the cells of the immune system in response to challenges by foreign agents such as viruses, bacteria, parasites, and tumor cells. And we mentioned that in a previous lecture, and we showed uh, the mechanism by which the interferons wa warn the nearby cells that there is an infecting virus and how they activate the gene and uh, produce the uh, interferon. Uh, the, these interferons are uh, external interferons, not the ones that are synthesized. So they are uh, so those are manufactured interferons. They used as an antiviral. They are used as immune modulating and antiproliferative actions. We have the alpha, beta, and gamma interferons. So the alpha and the beta interferon are produced by all the cells in response to viral infection. Gamma interferon produced only by the T lymphocyte and natural killer cells in response to uh, cytokine. So it's immune regulate. It has immune regulating uh, effect. Gamma has less antiviral activity compared to alpha and beta interferon. Mechanism of action we mentioned previously, uh, it's a protein kinase inhibit protein synthesis, oligodendrate synthetase, which leads to degradation of viral messenger RNA and the phosphodiesterase, which inhibits tRNA. The net result is inhibition of translation of the antiviruses. The antivirus spectrum for interferon alpha is uh, hepatitis B, hepatitis C, and the new pigilated interferon after the sophosphobere. Uh, we said that the NS5A and B uh, inhibitors are used instead of the pegylated interferon. Even the pegylated interferon is associated with uh, multiple side effects. So uh, nowadays they refrain from using the interferon or even the pegylated interferon uh, for a better quality of life for the uh, patients. And it can be used also for the human papillomavirus uh, infection. The addition of uh, polythylene glo uh, glycol to the interferon uh, pigillation has enhanced the half-life of the interferon when compared to its native uh, form. We, we talked about that previously. And it, uh, it has an antiproliferative action that inhibits the growth of certain cancers, such as Kaposi sarcoma and hairy cell leukemia. Kaposi sarcoma, when we talk about HIV, uh, Kaposi sarcoma is a lesion which is uh, seen in the AIDS patients and uh, when they studied the capacity sarcoma they isolated the human herpes virus 8 from 100 percent of the capacity sarcoma legion so capacity sarcoma is uh, could be an in uh, caused by an infection or reactivation of the human herpes virus 8 during the aids uh, in the aids patients Oral bioavailability is less than 1%, so it is not given orally. It can be given intralegional into the legion directly, uh, subcutaneous or IV, uh, distributed uh, to all body tissues except the central nervous system and the eye, and has a half-life of one to four hours. Uh, it has adverse effects such as uh, flu-like uh, syndrome, fever, headache. It leads to bone marrow suppression, neurotoxicity, cardiotoxicity, and it might lead to uh, infertility as well. Uh, therapeutic uses of interferons, it's used for chronic hepatitis B and C, uh, herpes uh, zoster virus infection in uh, cancer patients, cytomegalovirus in renal transplant patient, uh, also in con uh, condylomata acuminata can be given in the legion directly, and uh, it is associated with complete clearance in 50% of the time. Hairy cell leukemia. It uh, can be given uh, in combination with zidovudine, and uh, it can be used for the treatment of the Kaposi sarcoma as well. Uh, so that's all for the antiviral drugs. Uh, the, uh, this slide and the next slide uh, has a summary of the uh, viruses, the diseases, the drug of choice, and the alternative 
drugs that can be used for treatment. So this is the last lecture for the virology course and uh, shortly I will announce uh, a live session uh, so that you can all study all the uh, virology lectures and we will have this live session in order to answer any questions still I'm still answering questions on teams if you have any question you can send me on teams or uh, you can just uh, write it as a note and spare it for the time of the live session uh, where I'm going to uh, answer all your uh, question uh, that's all for the virology uh, wish you best of luck in the final exam thank you